Hey, you there. Thanks for watching again today. This is your sexy Moth King speaking. Yes, that's right, Bart Coppens, the one and only Mothman. And today I'm back to show you another amazing moth species. Now what we are seeing here is the Catocala fraxini, that is the scientific name. Its common name is um, the blue underwing moth, or to the people in the United Kingdom, the Clifton Nonpareil. Now this moth is one of the largest and also uh, rarest species of um, underwing moths that can be found in Northern Europe. In Northern Europe its populations are very scarce, honestly, and very localized and the moth is very difficult and rare to find. However, however, if we look at it on a more international scale you'll see that this moth is also very common. Now this is because um, if we consider other parts of Europe, for example, take Eastern Europe and uh, Southern and Central Europe, and here the moth is really common, to be honest. And why is this? Well, this moth really it prefers warmer uh, climates, uh, at least warmer summers, that is. And uh, in countries such as, uh, well, everything in Central and Eastern Europe, tend to have hotter summers than we do in uh, Northern Europe. So basically it's out of its comfort zone uh, when we talk about Northern Europe. And when I say Northern Europe, I mean countries like the Netherlands, uh, maybe Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, we are going to talk about Sweden, Finland, and here the species may be exceedingly rare because it's not very, uh, it cannot cope with the uh, environmental temperatures very well, which are basically too cold and temperate for this species to thrive. So it's basically contained to the warmest habitats, very localized. And uh, this is one of the demands this species uh, has to its environment. So as I said, in Central and Southern Europe, however, this species is quite common. And one of the reasons why uh, hot summers are so important for this moth uh, is because of its biology. This species overwinters in the egg stage. That means when a ma male and a female pair and uh, they have a successful copulation and lay fertile eggs, then the female will lay the eggs on tree bark or uh, branches of the host plant. And these eggs will not hatch. Well, actually they will not hatch the same year that they are laid. These eggs will decide to spend the winter uh, in their egg stage and hatch the following spring and summer. So that basically means these eggs can stay dormant for like five to seven months until winter has passed and then they decide to hatch when uh, things are heating up again. Now these young caterpillars they hatch uh, late spring, summer and start feeding on the leaves of their popular food plants. Now these food plants are uh, a variety of plants, but the most important one is uh, Populus, also known as poplar tree or cottonwood to Americans. And this tree is basically its main host plant, which it will use 90% of the time. It has a strong preference for Populus. However, um, more rarely the caterpillars have also been recorded on willow, uh, salix, and even ash tree, Fraxinus, which gives it its scientific name Catocala Fraxini. Uh, Fraxini refers to the Fraxinus, the ash trees. Now, here's the thing. These caterpillars hatch in late spring to summer. So basically when they hatch, things are already warming up. So basically they skipped the coldest time of the year, which is winter and early spring. And these caterpillars start to develop into summer even and then rapidly pupate. Now these pupa, they hatch very fast, in about three to four weeks. This is fast for such a big moth. And the adults, they appear around July to August. So that basically means the caterpillars and pupa and adults, they uh, both appear from late spring to summer to uh, late summer. And this is the, the warmest times of the year. So this moth really, um, almost all of its life stages, the caterpillar, the egg, the adult, they all live in the warmest time of the year, with the exception of the eggs, which spend autumn and winter and early spring in the egg stage, staying dormant, waiting to hatch. So this species is able to capitalize on warm temperatures quite efficiently, and that's why it thrives in warmer climates, and um, maybe rare in Northern Europe, where things are a bit temperate and cold. In captivity, this species is quite easy to breed. Um, 
just make sure the hardest part is uh, the small caterpillars which are very small and very fast they can escape very quickly they're also quite sensitive to um, keeping them too humid and and hygiene so you have to clean this container with these almost invisibly camouflaged small caterpillars that can run everywhere and escape pretty well but when they grow bigger that things become really easy the caterpillars become really big and strong and they grow very fast so in a few weeks you'll have turned them into quite big caterpillars and pupa which hatch into these beautiful moths now these moths have, um, like other moths, a big appetite, but they are never found on flowers. And that's because this species uh, will never uh, consume any kind of nectar. They have a different feeding strategy. They're basically fructivorous. Now that's a very expensive term to say something that eats fruit. Now, um, when we are talking about June or July, or even August, and you may notice that this is the time of the year that many uh, trees will start producing fruits which are become ripe and maybe even fall off the tree. And this moth is attracted to rotting fruits. That means it sucks the, the sweet juices out of fermenting and rotten fruit. Uh, think of things like wild cherries, apples, but also commercial fruit trees like plums or things like that. As long as it's sweet, the moth will be attracted to it. It's also attracted to tree, tree sap, which uh, may also be a quite sweet substance. For example, oak tree. If oak tree is damaged uh, by humans or by natural causes, it will bleed. It will bleed a very sweet uh, substance that moths are also quite readily attracted to. <laughs> For the average moth trapper, it's difficult to uh, find this species in a light trap. That's because this species is very shy and has a hidden lifestyle and is not very readily attracted to light. Now this is a problem that you'll often see with uh, any moth from the genus Catucala. However, there's a solution to this because as I just said, they have a big appetite and they are easily attracted to um, sweet substances, especially if you include a little bit of alcohol. Now why is this? In the wild, fermenting fruits, um, when they start to rot, and many yeasts and fungi will uh, turn sugar into alcohol and this process is called fermentation and that means that many rotten and fallen fruits in the wild already contain a certain percentage of alcohol it's natural to them now it also turns out that alcohol is a very volatile chemical that means it's spread through the air very quickly and the moths have a very strong sense of smell and by trying to smell alcohol um, it's easier for them to find food than uh, trying to smell sugar or anything else. So by being attracted to the smell of alcohol, this allows them to find fruits very efficiently. So in the wild, a hobbyist or a moth trapper uh, may actually may make a mixture of uh, beer and wine and uh, sugar um, and fruits. For example, mashed bananas work quite well or plums or apricots. Um, when the moths they smell this mixture of uh, sugar and alcohol then they will be readily attracted and there's also a little cheat if you uh, if you turn up the percentage of alcohol by including something strong like gin or vodka just a little bit then uh, the moths will drink this, the, the substance and become drunk and this means they become very easy to approach they become very slow and sluggish so, um, and that allows people to capture them or photograph them from up close for those who don't need to capture anything from the wild. With their wings closed, these moths are excellently camouflaged and that's what they do most of the time. During the day, this uh, nocturnal species will hide. Uh, especially, it will hide in plain sight uh, against backgrounds that it's very camouflaged on. For example, tree bark. It's very difficult to see this species camouflaged against the tree bark of a poplar tree or an oak tree so its four wings may blend out with the environment pretty well but sometimes it's also found on grey walls and cement and things like that. The moths seem to know quite well which environments it's optimally camouflaged on. If this fails to work then the moths can um, open their wings and flash their bright blue hind wings. This works as a defense mechanism and may scare away some predators. On the underside, the moths also have an interesting black and white marking, almost like a zebra. 
Uh, it may not look like much, but when the moths fly, and you will, in rapid fashion, you will see both the fore rings and the under rings, uh, yeah. basically uh, alternating. And this may uh, create a flashing effect. It makes it. This will make it difficult for birds to to track the motion of this butterfly in daylight, and may it make its flight pattern very confusing because the moth appears to blink a little bit, and it may also serve as a warning color. In captivity, this insect is quite easy and effortless to breed, and uh, overall, it's a beautiful species, one of my favorites, and I'm really happy to have showed you this time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, to subscribe to my channel, and check out uh, the links in the description to my video. Thanks and goodbye. Hope to see you next time.